And now we're going to play a game of hot, not, or sanctified. And this is a method of us examining church history and learning something about the people and ideas which have come before us. Today we're going to be talking about Peregrine. And Peregrine's a very interesting character, and then after we hear an overview of him, we're going to come around and decide whether or not this is a positive theological influence or not. So let's go right to the overview. Peregrine Laziosi lived from 1260 to 1345 and is known for being the patron saint of persons suffering from cancer. This patronage is a result of the miraculous healing in Peregrine's own cancerous foot. Furthermore, he was known for being a fervent preacher of the gospel, and he also had an interesting behavior of choosing to stand rather than sit throughout life. As a young man, Peregrine did not possess the attitude towards the church that he would develop later in life. In fact, young Peregrine was involved in politics and was part of an anti-pope movement that was prone to revolting. In the midst of this, the Pope sent a man named Philip Benizi to try to calm the situation. When Philip Benizi arrived, Peregrine struck him in the face. In response, Philip Benizi turned the other cheek. Peregrine was moved by this reaction, and he embraced the Universal Church. After his conversion, Peregrine went on to become a minister of the gospel. And not only was he known for his preaching, but he also adopted a rather peculiar behavior. Out of penance, Peregrine opted to stand whenever sitting was not absolutely necessary. Traditions hold that Peregrine may have stood for 30 years, only sitting in the rare cases where it was absolutely necessary to sit. As his life progressed, Peregrine developed varicose veins and cancer in his leg and foot. The cancer grew to the point that amputation was deemed necessary. During the night before the surgery, Peregrine devoted himself to prayer, where he fell asleep and experienced a vision. In this vision, Peregrine was at the crucifixion of Christ, and Christ came down from the cross and touched Peregrine in his leg. In the morning, Peregrine's leg and foot were found to be healed. The miraculous healing of Peregrine's leg and foot made him a notable figure in church history, as the miracle points to the nature of God. And now for the question, hot, not, or sanctified? Again, just to clarify how this works, when we say hot, we mean he is a positive theological inspiration. When we say not, we say, well, we don't like him very much and we don't want him to be our role model. And if we say sanctified, we are meaning that only God's sanctified judgment can decide whether or not Peregrine is a positive theological inspiration or not. Well, let's ask the question, hot, not, or sanctified? You can decide at home. Let's start. We're going to actually go in backwards order today. Normally it goes Amanda, Anthony, then me, but we'll do Anthony first, then Amanda and me. Anthony, what do you think? All right, so, you know, he might not be the best role model for everybody. He shows a little bit too much leg for that in all of his <laughs> portraits. But, um, you know, just on that, I mean, like, that much leg all the time, you know it's got to be hot. Nah. All right, he is a good role model. Um, Especially, it takes, I couldn't imagine for every moment in life except for what was absolutely necessary standing all the time. That must have been extremely, I mean, it was tumor-producing stressful so that actually is a lot of hard work. And, yeah, um, it takes us to the place. People ask the question, is it a tumor? It's like kindergarten cop. <laughs> it's not a tumor. Well, actually, in this case, evidently, it, it was a tumor. <laughs> so we're, we find ourselves in an interesting place there. But, yeah, he may not be the, the um, stud that Sebastian is, but he does have that leg showing, which gets him there. Yeah, anyways. that's extra That's extra hot points. But anyways, the um, and then, you know, obviously, of course um, – his miraculous healing, which is pretty awesome. Uh, his conversion is interesting, too. He sees the example set by, you know, a righteous Christian and then chooses to follow that as well, even though he instigated the problem originally, too. So that also implies a little bit of repentance on itself as well because, like, you know, if you're the instigator of the problem and then someone else settles the problem in a completely righteous way, you have to sit there and be like, okay, well, I was wrong there. <laughs> so... And that, that's what he did, so I, that's a really great example. It is. Amanda, what do you think? Well, I think, you know, as Anthony was kind of going through it, there's a lot happening in the story to kind of um, find some great inspiration for. Um, I I enjoy this um, concept of, of Peregrine uh, slapping someone, not so much um, uh, because that's what we should do, but um, there's other stories of actually saints um, slapping heretics, and so this is kind of the reverse happening. Um, it's just interesting as we look at our church history, uh, we Christians have not always done well to uh, respond appropriately, but in this story um, really has. 
And so it shows just this great example. Um, and also Peregrine's repentance. And then, yes, there's this weird thing going on in his statues and his iconography where he's always showing his left leg that was healed. I mean, it makes sense because that's the story that's known about him. But um, I, just when you think of, of uh, Catholic imagery, uh, the first thing that comes to your mind is not some guy showing off a lot yeah, of legs. Yeah, a lot of times he's got like his, he's holding like his robe or whatever he's wearing. He, he has different clothes on and different um, depictions of him. He's holding it up just a little bit. It's got his hand just sort of pulling it up. Um, <laughs> the he's only trying, time the yeah, Catholics that, are like, allowed to show like, some check skin. Out, check out like what I've got going on. <laughs> so he actually, I know he is somebody who's in ministry. He's obviously preaching. He's, he's doing a lot of other things. But um, it brings us to that point. There is always that person who wants to show you their wound. <laughs> I know, I know Amanda's experienced this from the, the ministerial standpoint. You, all you want to do is, is have a, a wonderful church service, and there's that one person who's like, guess what I've got to show you, preacher? Come on over here. And then they, they start to reveal themselves. And, you know. and, and sometimes they're not in easy to show places like a leg yeah. uh, or the lower leg. There are um, they're, they're other places that, that make for very awkward conversation. But I think to that point um, where Peregrine has this, this um, dream and this vision where Jesus comes off the cross to heal him, I think speaks volume to this idea that salvation is not purely spiritual. In our earlier conversation when we talked about cloning dogs and what is a soul, um, salvation, Christian salvation, is not just about saving some abstract concept of a soul. It's about saving a whole person. And though we do um, understand that God doesn't always uh, heal like he healed Peregrine, he just kind of woke up and the cancer was gone, that doesn't always happen. There are people, good Christians, that still pass away uh, because of cancer, but healing still happens and it's still holistic. And it, it just, I think that's the, the ma most amazing part of Peregrine's story. And for our people in our churches, even though it can be awkward when they do want to show you their wounds and they're in inappropriate places that to be shown at all, unless you are a um, medical professional, um, but there are people that are hungry to be healed and holistically mm -hmm. healed. Sure. And so Anthony said hot, Amanda said hot, yes. I'm here, it's my turn. I'm going to actually make a few <laughs> distinctions. I'm going to make a distinction and say the details we've talked about in Peregrine's life, I think are hot. I think the whole idea of someone being devoted enough to pay penance, I mean, we don't see that in our world very much. Somebody being like, well, I did some mistakes as a young person. Now I'm going to stand for 30 years. Um, we don't, you don't really see that very often. I think that's a, an influential thing, people being committed and them actually understanding the, the weight of their actions. I think that's positive. I think even his the inspiration he has to go out and be a, a good minister, he doesn't really have much agency when it comes to his healing. He, he's not someone who is, who is doing a lot of blessing. He is devoted to prayer life, but you see the blessing come from God, and that really takes us, our attention away from Peregrine himself or Peregrine himself and places that on God and God's healing power. And that, I think, is definitely hot, the inspiration we can get from seeing God come and work in someone's life. Now, again, I said I'm going to have to make some distinctions because there is one thing I'm going to have to say not about. And that is, I can't say not about Peregrine as a whole because I don't actually know when his endeavors end. In fact, I, I challenge you, go and get on YouTube right now and do a search for Saint Peregrine Laziosi, and you'll you'll find some interesting videos which will leave you with the question, where is St. Peregrine currently, and is he still with us? Because you will find some videos, like we've talked about bone relics in the past. We, I know at least part of the rib cage, and maybe even the whole corpse of Peregrine is still with us as a relic. So at that point, I don't know when the, the advents of um, Peregrine's ministry have ended, so I can't say hot or not, or even sanctified as a whole, because I don't even know when his ministry has ended. We, we had a particular date when it said that he's passed, but you start looking around, you see bone relics of him going around, and you, you're left with this question, well, how much of him is still left? What's he still doing? He's kind of got this wonderful place in ministry now where he doesn't even have to prepare sermons. He doesn't have to do reading. He doesn't have to go look at other people's wounds. Just wherever they're carrying, um, he's doing ministry. Um, interesting thing. And it brings us back to the whole leg that Amanda was talking about earlier. Oh yeah, so yeah, if the if he if all his relics are still around, does the is the left leg because that's kind of the one that's depicted as being healed? Is the left leg kind of worth more? Does it does it have a little bit more uh, oomph of uh, power as far as relics go than the other ones? But yeah, um, is there maybe like a third or a fourth left leg um, being carried around? I, I don't know. It's very yeah, interesting. It is an interesting question. So I challenge you. I cannot verify it, but go out there and do a search and you'll, 
on you get on YouTube and do search for Saint Peregrine Laziosi, and you'll find some videos of a corpse in a casket, and it, it sort of suggests that it's Peregrine, but I can't verify it. Um, which leaves us with the question, how much of Peregrine is still with us? <laughs> and anyone out there who is more knowledgeable than I, please give us the answer to that. The world needs to know how much of, of St. Peregrine is still with us. And what effects do the, do the different bone relics have? I mean, are you sort of lucked out if you were wanting your to visit the, the leg that was healed and then you get the wrong leg? I mean, is that <laughs> I don't know what that means um, in terms of, of one's ministerial authority, um, in terms of Peregrine anyways. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap that up there. Um, I really don't know what else to say about that. So it just leaves you a little bit bewildered when you get to the bone relics. That's always a, a shocking place to be. Well, and a quick little note on that: when we say bone relics, like when you guys were telling me about this before we saw the YouTube video of the the corpse, I was thinking like skeleton, like purely bones. And he's a little bit more juicy than that. Just to give everyone a warning, it um, is juicy. <laughs> so uh, just just be forewarned if those kinds of things scare you. That's probably not the investigation uh, direction you should go down. But um, yeah, do more investigation about Peregrine and. Yes. and his relics. Peregrine has very, very juicy things for you to to look at when you do searches for him. Um, you can add that to the to the mysteries in the world. You know, we've been wanting to do something fun like a late night event. That's um, we actually have some some cameras and stuff capable of doing night vision. You always see people who want to do like paranormal <laughs> um, things. As as ministers, you occasionally get people who come and say, you know, I've got something going on in my life. There's a demon oppressing me. I actually think that would be something that that would be fun to explore in terms of our Kingdom of the Logos content. Um, something that is a, a paranormal endeavor without even getting into the mystics of, you know, ghost, poltergeist, demons, and things like that, which I, I think are rather silly. But just dealing with, you know, bone relics in and of itself. I mean, that that that's content almost writes itself in terms of paranormal investigation. But anyways, um, everyone can forgive us now. Um, <laughs> I know we, we've broke from tradition a little bit. We've maybe been a bit too comical today. The, the church boards are waiting outside with their, their letters telling us we're all fired. Pitchforks um, and torches, yeah. Yes, the pitchforks and torches are waiting for us, all, all the same. Anyways, we thank you for watching. I know it, it's something you do when you have to take time aside from your day. Maybe you download our podcast and carry it with you in the car. We thank you so much for listening to us and spending time with us. Please send us your questions and comments. You can find me on Twitter at J. Dylan Proctor. You can find us, of course, on Facebook, on YouTube. We're also on Tumblr and a few other social media sites. You can find us wherever you pick up your podcast. If you get iTunes, SoundCloud, and the various podcasting outlets, do a search for Kingdom of the Lagos and download us and take us with you wherever you go. If you really, really enjoyed our content, you can help us out a lot by just sharing our content. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, just hit that curved angle, that curved arrow, said angle. Again, this is, I don't even know if I can even do an ad for myself at this point. Um, But just hit that share button and that will help us out tremendously, just sharing our content. If you'd like to donate monetarily, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash kingdom of the logos. And on that, remember to exhume righteousness, lest our world would bury it and have it eradicated forever. Have a blessed day.